who did this one, I think Thursday. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. We talked about that one. And then last time, Tuesday, we talked about this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and L. Lean not into your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Very good. Everybody, that's a great verse to memorize. We talked about that last time. We talked about that this morning in our devotion time before school started. <clears throat> all right. Here's today's verse. And if you have any of you ever been to vacation Bible school in a church, anybody been to vacation Bible school? One or two? Okay. You remember doing the place of the Bible? Anybody remember that? We, when we were young, we said, remember, I was the place of the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible. God's holy word will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. I will hide his words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Well, that's based on two or three Bible verses. This is one of them. This is from Psalm 119. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Very good. <clears throat> so I, I chose this deliberately at the beginning of the school so we could focus on Bible memory. Uh, I think, did I give you last time, if you wanted it, I gave you a list, right, of verses you could memorize. Um, I would really strongly encourage you to memorize verses. You don't have to use those. You can pick your own out of the Bible if you want to. Just come quote me some verses. Just come quote me a verse and, and get, have it written down on a little piece of paper with your name and the number of words. And that's all you have to do. So this would be a good brief verse to memorize. It's so important to hide God's word in our heart. That means memorize it. Then if you hide his word in your heart, it means memorize it. Memorize it, memorize it, memorize it. Get it hidden in your heart and mind. And the, God's Word does a lot of things. This is one thing it does. It makes it less likely we will sin when we know God's Word in our heart. But it also gives us peace, and it brings us God's joy, and it brings us a sense of God's purpose and God's presence. It also brings to verse, a mind a verse when you need it sometimes. If you need a little encouragement, God can bring a verse to your mind you memorize. Maybe you need to share a verse with somebody else to encourage them. God can bring a verse to your mind that you've memorized. God's word is powerful when you get it in your heart. It changes us from the inside out. So I encourage you to memorize it. Two phrases. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against thee. At the start. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. All right, I'm going to pray. Is there anything in particular you want to mention before I pray? Am I good? Thanks, Father, for this day we have together. Thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us how important it is to memorize your word. Help us to stay at the business of memorizing your word, hiding more and more of your word in our hearts, and maybe reviewing some of the things we've memorized before, but we've kind of lost them. Help us to maybe redo some of that and get some of those back in our hearts and minds. So thank you for giving us this verse. We want to hide your word in our hearts so that we will not be as likely to sin against you. Thank you that your word protects us in many, many ways. and gives us strength and gives us peace and joy and a sense of your presence. Helps us to trust you more. Thank you for your word, Lord. Help us to memorize it. Take it seriously. Lord, I thank you that these kids are in ACT prep. And I know that some of them have not learned basic math that they really needed to have learned by now. But I pray that during this course, they will maybe learn it, maybe for the first time, maybe relearn it if they've learned it and forgotten it, so that they can do well when they finally get to the ACT. Lord, I know ACTs, and they, I think they know by now that the ACT is not something they can prepare for in a short time. It takes a lot of time, a lot of thinking, there are a lot of topics, and a lot of issues that have to be learned and studied and memorized. So help them to take these tips seriously and to memorize them and to learn them and to learn as much math as they can that will help them when it comes time to take that test. So thank you for this time we have with you. Pray you'd help us to make the most out of it and help us to bring you lots of joy and glory and honor because you're worthy of it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Here's where I got to. Okay. Yeah, I started talking about for those of you who are not very good at algebra, it's kind of a little sort of a trick you can use. Uh, to, uh, to sometimes get around the algebra it can be really useful to you. And we already started this, but 
You do have paper and pencil, right? Everybody got paper and pencil? You need paper and pencil or pen. I want you to really try these things. We talked about that last time. So this is not right because it's talking about dollars and cents. But I told you last time, if you actually were given numbers, you wouldn't have any trouble with it. Your brain would say, oh, yeah, I know the difference in dollars and cents. If you had $5 and you bought uh, 10, or 10 pieces of candy, which cost 30 cents each, how much would you have left? You wouldn't have any trouble at all. You say five minus 10 times 30, that's $3. You change it to dollars just automatically in your head. But when you see variables, it, it can be confusing. This looks right. X pieces, it costs Y cents each. You multiply X times Y. But of course, you're not taking into consideration the difference in dollars and cents. And on the ACT, that can throw you for a loop. Right, so here's what you're going to do when on, on the, sometimes for some of the problems on ACT, especially if you're weak in algebra. Sometimes if they give you numbers, if they give you variables in a, in a problem, a question and variables in the answers that requires algebra to solve. Sometimes you can pick a number for that variable. I would pick a two or a five or a ten, something easy with your calculator. Anything can be easy, probably. Just don't use a zero or one because they, they're kind of tricky in certain problems that'll mess you up. You'll get a wrong answer, but two, five, or 10 would work. If it asks for a negative number, use a negative number. But you're going to plug that number into the question and then you're going to plug that number into the answers. Sometimes it takes a little more time than solving it, but, but sometimes it'll, it'll solve it quickly. Now, can any of you tell me what? Kind of problem this is. This is a this requires an algebra skill that you learned in algebra one and probably got reinforced in algebra two. Do you know what it's called? You want your you know what I'm doing here? There's a word called factoring. Factoring a trinomial in this case, three terms trinomial. You're factoring it into a product of two binomials. All right. Now how many of you remember at least seeing something like this? You remember seeing it before? One or two, three or four? Okay. You see it. Now, you may not have forgotten how to do it. And, and guys, that's not bad. I mean, you know, we do forget math. If you don't keep working on it, you're going to forget it. If you really did learn it the first time, you'll relearn it again pretty quickly. If you didn't learn it the first time, you need to learn it now. So the, the idea behind this is to factor. But as you can probably guess, I'm going to teach you a way around factoring if you've forgotten how. But let's pretend right now that you don't know any more than you know right now and you're taking the real ACT and you've gotten to this problem and you got to try to guess at the right answer. I want you to look at those answers and try to think about it for a little while on your own. Scribble something down on your paper. Do whatever you have to do to try to see what makes sense to you. And if you can't figure it out, just be patient. But try to think about it. Try to work with it. See if you can make it make some sense to you, and then I'll talk about it extensively in just a minute. And if any of you get an answer or if you finally decide on an answer that for some reason makes a little sense to you, even if you're not 100% sure, uh, just kind of wave at me and get my attention. Let me know you've got some kind of answer.
And I will allow two possibilities on things like this. I want you to at least try, but some of you may just finally run into a wall and think, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm stuck. That's okay. Just be patient with us for a minute. But uh, how many of you are still messing with it, trying to come up with something? Anybody still working? With it? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, go ahead. Keep working a little bit. <clears throat> You need a little time? Some of you still working on it? Anybody still working on it? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. That's all I'll give you a little more time. Are any of you willing to tell me what you're getting, what you going, what you guess is? I promise not to make fun of you if you miss, because we all miss them. I mean, I see problems too. You know, none of us are perfect. Anybody want D? Okay, that's a reasonable guess. I don't think it's right. Did anybody else get D? You got E? I think that's right. Did anybody else get E? You did. Uh, are you willing to tell me what you tried, or 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 just how, I mean, how you, how you went about finding an answer? I mean, if you just guessed, it's okay, but hey, there you are. Okay. Thank you. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Start again. Your voice is very quiet, and, I, and, they're, they're, and she's not making a lot of noise. I just can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So you tried multiplying these out to get that? Okay, okay. That's a, that's a, that's a good tactic. You may have made a little careless mistake there. I can see why that might work. Why that was that. What did you do? Did you do anything different? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> well, so you might not necessarily have to have a negative four at the end. That's that's good thinking, but but I can see your logic there. But I can I can tell you a situation when you might not have a negative point at the end, it would still be okay. So that would not be foolproof. Uh, can anybody think of any other ways we might attack this problem? How might you do it? Or anything at all? Or something? Maybe we've already said it even, but what, what are some ways you can attack the problem? Um, 
I say, hold on a second. Alexis, I couldn't get your name to come out. Alexis, uh, you were, you were multiplying them, right? Did, did anybody else try that instead of, instead of trying to do something with this? You just went through here and started multiplying these things together. Did anybody else try that? That's a good strategy. It's a good strategy. Uh, it, it seems like it's a little time consuming, but it, but you could multiply this times this and see if it gives you this. You can multiply this times this. Now you have to remember how to multiply binomials if you do that, and that can be kind of tricky. Use foil. You remember foil? Any of you? Okay, okay, okay. So foil. So you could, you could say, for example, let me show you what I'm talking about. You could start with that first one and say, okay, I'm going to multiply those out. Foil, first, outer, inner, last. Remember this? The first terms in each, you multiply them together. 2x times 9x is 18x squared. So far, so good. Outer, F-O-I-L. Outer means the outer terms in the whole expression, the 2x and the 4. They're both positive, so that would be 8x. The I stands for inner, and again, you're thinking of the whole expression. The, when you think about the whole thing, these are the outer terms, these are the inner terms. That's negative 27x, negative 10 to the positive. And finally, the last terms, Again, you're thinking now of separate binomials. The last term in this one and the last term in this one. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. So when you multiply all that together, you get to 18x squared. That's good. You get to negative 12. That's good. But this does not add up to negative 15x. It's negative 19x. So that won't work. So you have to throw that one out. You see? And you can do that through the whole process. You can multiply them all together. All right. That is definitely one way you could do this problem. And it would eventually work, although it would be a little bit time consuming. There is another thing, if you studied factoring, and you're factoring a po polynomial, two or three or four terms, whatever, there's another thing you need to always watch for. I always taught my students to do this first before you use FOIL. Do you know what I'm getting at? Anybody have any clue what I'm talking about? If, if you didn't have these answers, and all you had was 18x squared, minus 15x minus 12, just as an algebra problem out of a book or something on a test. And I said, factor that. And you don't have any answers. You just got to factor it. Uh, you know, this is a trinomial. So most often you're going to wind up using foil on that and, and two binomials. I would tell my students, write two empty parentheses and start filling them in using foil backwards. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody with me? Everybody with me? Pay attention. I'm teaching you something valuable here. But there's something you should do first before you write the empty parentheses and before you use FOIL backwards. Do you, you have any idea what I'm talking about? Haley, you're with me, right? Okay. Anybody, anybody have any idea what I'm talking about? No? There's something else you look for in any polynomial. If you're going to factor it, there's something else you look for. Before you write down the entry parentheses, you, none, none, none of you can remember this. Were you talking about the foil thing, or what? Okay, okay, okay. Well, let, let me. This is simpler than a formula. The first thing you always should look for when you're factoring a polynomial. I don't care how many terms there are. Two, three, four, five terms. Doesn't matter how many terms. You you won't factor any more than four. But the first thing you look for is the greatest common factor of all three terms. Because you can always factor out the greatest common factor. Remember greatest common factor? Remember that? Do, do these three terms have a common factor? Three. Three goes into every one of those. So you're going to take the three out, and you're left with 6x squared minus 5x minus 4, right? 3 times 6x squared is 18x squared. 3 times negative 5x is negative 15x. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, right? Now, guys, if you could have remembered that, and I'm not, I'm not upset with you. Please don't misunderstand me. If you could have remembered that, you would have said, hey, please don't factor out the 3. There's got to be a 3 factor out of that sooner or later. 
must be D or E because I can factor a three out. So if you forgot foil, you can say, well, I can factor out a three. It's either D or E. I got a 50-50 shot at this one if I can't remember how to factor. Now, let me go ahead and illustrate how they're wanting you to do this algebraically, how they're, how they're wanting you to think. So you factor out the three. Now you got three terms. You're going to factor this trinomial. And like I said, you're going to write two empty parentheses and start filling them in. 6x squared. All right, there are two possibilities. Well, actually, there's four possibilities. You want to think of it that way. This could be a 6x and this could be an x. This could be an x. This could be a 6x. It could be 3x and 2x. 2x and 3x. All those are possibilities. So I'm going to look up here and get my clue from this. If I factor it out to 3, I'm going to look at these. 3x and 2x. Well, they both got the same thing. I'm going to write that down. 2x and 3x. That must be right. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. And that those two eliminated all the other possibilities. It's definitely not 6x and 1x. And then I look at these and say, wow, these are just alike, except they've got the signs different. Hmm. So I know I've got a 4 and a 1 here. I just got to figure out what the sign is. That's a negative 15x. This is a negative 5x. When I do the outers and the inners, I get 8x and 3x. One of those has got to be negative. One's got to be positive. And the reason we know that is because this times this has got to be negative 4. So one's got to be negative, one's got to be positive. If I get a negative 5x, which one of those is going to have to be negative? The 8x or the 3x? Got to add up to negative 5x. Have I lost you completely? <laughs> Stay with me. Try to watch, guys. I want you to learn some stuff here. And I wrote down two empty parentheses. And I started filling it in with things that would multiply to give me this trinomial. The first terms are 2x and 3x. I know it's either D or E because they both have a 3 already factored out. So I look up here and they both got 2x and 3x. So I put 2x and 3x. That's done. Then I say the last terms have to be 4 and 1 because it's 4 and 1. But I don't know whether they're positive or negative. That's the part I got to figure out. Now, to get this middle term, this negative 5x, I got to add the outers and the inners. Outers are 8x, inners are 3x. How do you get negative 5x? I've got an 8x and a 3x. If they're both positive, it's 11x. If they're both negative, it's negative 11x. If one of them's positive, one of them's negative, it'll either be positive or negative 5x. Are you with me here? You know how to add positive and negative numbers. So is 8x positive or is 8x negative? It's negative. It's got to be negative. If 8x is positive and 3x is negative, that would give me a positive 5x. 8x minus 3x is 5x, but negative 8x plus 3x is negative 5x. So the 8x has got to be negative. That means this one's negative and this one's positive. And that tells me it's E. Now that's what they're wanting you to do. And it would be really, really good for you to learn that. You need to be able to factor trinomials. Yes. And the truth is, if you're pretty good at factoring poly polynomials, that's probably the quickest way to do it. I, I know I took a lot of time, but if I were doing it myself, you know, my, because I'm, I'm pretty good at factoring trinomials, I would have looked at that and said, well, I know it's either D or E because there's a 3 there. And then I would have said, I got to get a negative 15. That's going to be a negative 8 and a positive 3. That'll give me a negative 5 times 3 is a negative 15. I'd move on. So I probably wouldn't even write anything down. I would know. I could kind of do that in my head and move on very quickly. So if you know the stuff, it helps you to finish in a more timely fashion. It gives you more time for the harder problems. So it's good to know it. Now, take a deep breath. Here's another thing you can do. So you say, yeah, I forgot all that stuff. I don't know all that stuff you did. I, I forgot it all. Okay, then let's say let X be, let's just say 2. Do you remember how to tell your calculator that X is 2 from now on? I told you this the other day. Store. 
you put a two and then store and then the variable and then enter i guess i don't know i don't know if you have to enter or not but from then on if you put an x on your screen it'll give you a two it's going to say every time you put an x up there's two if you put five x on your screen and hit enter it'll give you a 10. it's going to assume x is two so what you're going to do next is put this in your calculator just exactly like it is it's exactly like it is and it'll give you a number i know i mean your calculator can do this fast but let's let's just just stay with me for a minute here i'm going to put a two in here two squared is four four times 18 72, is that right? 72. 2 times 15 is 30. Minus 12. Did I make a mistake? Is that right? I just put a 2 where the X is and evaluated this. 4 times 18. 2 times negative 15. Negative 12. 72 minus 30 is 42, minus 12 is 30. Okay? Are you with me? Are you trying to stay with me? I'm telling you a real good tip for ACT stuff when you forget algebra. This is called the target. 30. You say it again. I, I took a number, any number. I could, I could pick a 3, I could pick a 10, but your calculator doesn't much matter. And I'm going to say let X be that number, but, I, but for our illustration purposes, I said let's take a 2. I put a 2 in here and evaluated that when x is 2. And then I'm going to evaluate each one of these when x is 2. And one of them is going to give me a 30. I'm not going to do them all for time's sake. But 2 times 2, two, times two is 4 minus 3. I'm doing A right now. 2 times 9 is 18 plus 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. 18 plus 4 is 22. That's not 30. So I scratch that one off. I would finally get down here and I would say 3, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5, 3 times 2 is 6 minus 4 is 2, 3 times 5 is 15 times 2 is 30. Bingo. That's my target. <clears throat> That's it. So you can find it without knowing any algebra. Just by plugging in a number here and evaluating it. You calculate it to do that for you if you use this right here and just put that number in and then put each one of these in. If you happen to remember enough factor and you realize, wait a minute, there's a three there. There's a common factor. It's got to be D or E. There's only ones that factored out the three. Then you can, you've eliminated your choices. In fact, if you know it's either D or E, and you try D and it's wrong, pick E and move on. There's no point in checking E. It's the only thing that's left. When you've narrowed it down to two and you eliminate one of them, then just say, well, it's got to be the other one. Move on. Don't waste any more time on ACT. So that will help you get some problems right if you've forgotten how to do the algebra. It's not a cure-all. It won't, it won't solve every problem. A lot of problems are not like this. But it can help you with those kind of problems. You okay with that? Anybody got a question about it? Need me to do anything again? This is a valuable, valuable tip. We'll be doing some of this stuff here in the next few slides. Okay. No, I choose. I chose a two. I choose a two a lot. Okay. Here's you another one. Work on that one for a few minutes. <clears throat>
I realize you may not have had time to do this one yet, but for time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it a little bit. Um, do you know what I would do on my test booklet if I read a problem like this first? You want to guess what I would do? I would. I would draw this thing. It's a rectangular box, but it has a height, too. It has a base and a height, so it's three-dimensional. Now, there, there's more than one way you can draw it. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about whether it's to scale or not. Just don't worry about it. But one thing you can do is just, you know, kind of do this kind of thing, you know. And I don't know. I guess. You know, draw a box like that. If you want, if you're not good at drawing boxes, you can draw two rectangles kind of off the same shape and then connect the corners and pretend that that's your box, you know, just whatever. Just That's fine. So there's a base down here with a length and a width, and there's a height. And it says its base is x by x, so it's a square base. This is x, and this is x. And the height is y. Who was that? Alyssa? Height is y. Now, you got to think about what they're asking for. Surface area. You know what that's talking about? You know what the surface area is? You know how to find a surface area? What? The tops? That's part of it. How many surfaces does this thing have? Six. What they're wanting you to do is to find the area of each surface. Pretend it's a closed box. And the area of each surface and add them all up. That's the total surface area of the whole box. It's not volume. Volume would be something different. The volume of a three-dimensional box is length times width times height. You just multiply it. But you've got six different surfaces to find the area of. The way you do it algebraically is say, okay, i got a base down here that's x by x. So the base is x times x, which is x squared. And the top is the same. I'm going to call it the bottom. The top is the same, x times x, which is x squared. You see that? These are the same. Then I've got this side over here, which is x, y. So that's the right side is x times y. The left side is going to be exactly the same. And then you've got a front up here that's also the same. And you've got a back back there. I'll call it the rear, I guess. And it's also x, y. So I've got these six areas. And then I just add them all together. So there's two x squareds and one, two, three, four x, y's. But I look up here and I don't see that. Do you know why? 
they factored it. Yeah. What did they, how did, what did they factor out? The twos and there's an X that you can factor out also. If you factor a two X out of this, when you divide this by two X, you get X. When you divide two, this by two X, you get two Y. And so it looks like that's the right answer. You get it, Mary? Good. Anybody else get it right? Anybody else get it right? Oh, good. Good on. All right. Now, that's the algebraic way to do it. And that's the way I would do it myself on the real ACT. I'm, I might not take as much time because I'm explaining it to you. But that's the way you do it. You'd probably look at it and say, okay, X squared, X squared, that's 2X squared, XY, 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 that's 4XY. You wouldn't write it all down. Not on the real, not on the real test. You'd say 2X squared plus 4XY. You'd probably write this down and then look at this and say, oops, they factored out a 2X. So I got to factor out a 2X. There it is. All right. Now, let's pretend once again that you don't know how to do that. And so what you can do is say, okay, We've got X and Y up here. I've got X's and Y's down here. So I'm going to say X equals 2 and Y equals 3. Now, I've still got to know what surface area means, but I've got a 4 down here plus a 4 up here plus a 6, what, 6 here in the back front. I mean, I got four sixes. That's 24. So I got 4 plus 4 is 8, and 24 is 32. That's my target. Now, this time I had to substitute two numbers in because I have an X and a Y. So I'd put two for an X and three for a Y. Then I go down through here and plug the same two numbers in until I find one that works. When you get here, you'll have two times X, which is two. For instance, there's another X. That's another two. Two times Y would be six. Two times three is six. Two times two is four. Two plus six is eight. Four times eight is 32. I found it when I got to this one right here. So you can do it without knowing how to factor, without knowing how to work with variables, or if variables confuse you, algebra will confuse you. This is another problem. You can substitute numbers in, find a target number, and find the ones of this, that one is your target number. Works both ways. Make sense? Yeah. So that's pretty handy. All right. I'll stop there for time's sake. Anything else you want to say or ask? I glanced at you, Autumn, and you got a strand of hair coming down here. And and I, when I glanced at I thought it was a wire coming down. And I thought, she's listening to her, <laughs> her phone. <laughs> okay. Not bad. All right. Anything else? Let's pray. Father, thank you for these kids. Thank you for the way they've been paying attention today and trying to learn this stuff. I know some of this is new to some of them. Some of this they did not learn earlier in a math course. and Some of it they've learned and forgotten. But I pray it help them to get these things back in their heads, back in their minds. So when it comes time for the ACT, they'll do well. Thank you for this opportunity to live for you today. Help us to remember you're with us all day long and to remember and acknowledge you in all our ways. Thanking you that you direct our path. So be in charge of us. Get glory any way you choose. Use us any way you choose. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.